Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends. Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss uh, basically multicultural uh, or multiculturalism and the uh, way they try to uh, renegotiate or uh, re-theorize uh, the uh, liberal notion of citizenship as individual uh, being a self-defining subject and therefore, they carry certain rights as a citizen to a political community. In the multicultural or communitarian notion of citizenship, we will see how they try to re-theorize or renegotiate with this uh, liberal conception of uh, citizenship as individual being the right bearing citizenship and that rights is uh, given to the individual not because he or she is a member to a particular community, but he or uh, she is a self-defining rational subject. So, we will see it in the multicultural uh, debates on uh, citizenship and how they try to negotiate with the liberal conceptualization of citizenship. Then in the second part of our lecture today, we will focus on the cosmopolitan notion of citizenship where there is a vagueness, the practice of uh, citizenship is not uh, very much uh, in accordance with the cosmopolitan citizenship. However, the ideals of citizenship remains a very powerful ideal and therefore, worth considering when we discuss about the notion of citizenship and then we will conclude today's uh, lecture. So, to begin with the contemporary debates on citizenship have questioned the idea that citizen can enjoy rights independent of their context and this context of individual which can be social, cultural, linguistic, economic determines a lot of changes or a lot of scopes that individual may be able to enjoy in his or her life. So, the multicultural or the contemporary debates on citizenship question the premise of theory which believes that citizenship or citizenship rights can be enjoyed by the individual independent of his context whether it is social, cultural, economic or linguistic. So, debates over multiculturalism, differences, plurality and diversity have significantly opened up many contestations in theories of citizenship. So, they argue that citizen as an individual is also a member to a particular community and therefore, when we guarantee, when we give some rights to that individual we also need to take into account the social, cultural, economic and the linguistic backgrounds of the citizenship which actually determines the way that individual exercise his or her citizenship rights. So, these new debates about uh, individual, uh, individual being member to a political community but also to uh, a social, cultural, ethnic, linguistic community which determines which uh, shapes his values, which shapes his behavior and opinion about politics and so on. So, therefore, while we uh, give some rights to the individual, we also need to take into account these uh, social, cultural, linguistic backgrounds of the individual, which is uh, something very uh, crucial in actual exercise of citizenship rights of the individual. If you remember the liberal notion of citizenship, there uh, there is uh, this understanding of individual as an abstract self-defining individual and his or her context really do not matter in his exercise of citizenship rights. Now, the multicultural theorists try to renegotiate, re-theorize uh, such notions of individuals and citizenship. 
basically the multicultural discourse on rights cherishes the cultural diversity and envisages a society in which different communities can form a common identity while retaining their cultural specificity. So, the multicultural argument is that, that we should not homogenize the cultural diversities or plurality of a society. Rather, we need to celebrate uh, those diversity and plurality which help in developing a more enriching experiences or understanding of politics, identity, recognition, respect and so on. So, it envisages a society which celebrate the cultural diversity and plurality where different communities can come together to form a common identity or a society which has some common outlook and yet it permits differences or um, uh, the cultural specificities of different communities. So, in other words, uh, one need not to lose or forego one's cultural, linguistic or ethnic identity in order to uh, participate as a free and equal member in the political community. So, uh, here the multicultural or the communitarian argument is about the celebration of diversities and cultural specificities which helps or enriches the uh, participation or uh, the making of uh, a common identity for the society as a whole, where one uh, participate uh, in uh, the collective affairs, but participate also as a member of his or her particular cultural, ethnic or linguistic community. So, there are growing interest in redefining citizenship by giving due importance to the cultural differences. And this is done by striking a balance between the numerous identities like religious, cultural, linguistic while constructing a common political identity for the citizen of nation. So, in the multicultural uh, discourse, the idea is how to celebrate or recognize the cultural differences even when we are aspiring or we are trying to create a common political identity. And how that can be done, this is something which we will discuss in a later part of this lecture, particularly when we focus on Iris Marian Young or Will Kimlicker. So, in the debates over citizenship in contemporary times, the ideas like multiculturalism and minority rights are invoked as democratic value, whereby diverse cultural communities are granted the right to negotiate or renegotiate their fair terms of inclusion in the national political sphere. So, uh, this uh, kind of debate uh, in citizenship discourse open up in new ways of uh, theorizing citizenship where uh, different communities, particularly those who are uh, different or uh, minority, it gives them the scope to negotiate their uh, terms of inclusion in the larger political society. So, in order to individual from a minority community or the marginal community or a different cultural, ethnic community to participate in a free and equal manner need not to uh, be based on uh, his uh, foregoing his cultural specificities or ethnic specificities and so on. So, uh, the multicultural discourse on citizenship opens up those debates and discourses where these communities tries to participate in the political sphere or the national political sphere by renegotiating the terms of their inclusion in the larger community. So, the idea of uh, differentiated citizenship was put forth by many theorists who thought that the idea of common rights that is universal and uniformly given to every single member of the community could not accommodate the specific or the particular needs of a large number of ethnic, religious and linguistic communities who are excluded or who feel excluded or marginalized by the mainstream society. So, the uh, theorist who argue for differentiated citizenship believes that the idea of common rights or uniform rights that should be made available to every single member of the community 
is not enough because it cannot accommodate the particular or the specific needs of different uh, socio uh, different ethnic religious or linguistic communities particularly uh, of those who are from the marginal or the minority community and their needs their specificities require a notion of citizenship which uh, take into account their differences their distinctiveness and yet allow them to participate in the common affairs of the uh, society so they argue that different groups can be accommodated into common citizenship only by adopting what Iris Marian Young called differentiated citizenship. So, this idea of differentiated citizenship is put forth by the Iris Marian Young who believes that the different communities, uh, different linguistic, cultural, ethnic communities requires different kind of recognition and in national politics such considerations needs to be um, taken into account while granting uh, citizenship rights to different individuals to different communities and there the specificities and particularities of different communities needs to be taken into account and you cannot just have a kind of liberal equal or uniform rights that is uh, given to everyone. So, the needs of the particular community is something which they argue. So, the notion of differentiated citizenship means that members of certain groups should be accommodated not only as individuals, but also through their memberships and their rights would partially depend upon their group membership. So, this idea of group differentiated uh, citizenship is based on the assumption that certain rights should be given to individual not because he or she is individual independent of his socio cultural linguistic backgrounds, but also because he or she belongs to a particular linguistic, socio, ethnic or cultural uh, community. So, differentiated citizenship argues for differentiated rights depending upon the individual membership to a particular groups or ethnic communities. So, Young argues that a society where some groups are privileged while others are oppressed, persons should leave behind their particular affiliations and adopt a general view while insisting all as citizens. So, this operations or subordinations is something which is detrimental for developing a common outlook or to have same sense of participation or association with the larger community. So, de to develop that outlook, one needs to also forego or leave behind uh, the particular affiliation and adopt a general view. However, that adoption should not privilege one community over the other or oppress one community by the other. Now, uh, further on from this discourse on differentiated citizenship, we have Will Kimlicka, where he argues about different ways in which uh, the cultural or the ethnic diversities in the communities can be reconciled. So, seeking to redefine the principle of equality and make it compatible with multiculturalism, Will Kamlika provides a framework of representation and membership that accommodates cultural and group differences in a way that a person's group membership and membership in a cultural community is not of any disadvantage to her. So, uh, Will Kimlika is here basically trying to provide a mechanism of representation where uh, the membership of one's uh, cultural communities or group membership is not seen as a kind of uh, disadvantage to the individual. So, for example, in a society which is a liberal society and uh, do not acknowledge any kind of privilege that is associated to one's belongingness to a particular community may in practice, uh, practically speaking, still leave uh, a scope for oppression and privilege that is associated with a particular community in the nation state. So, Will Kimlika is trying to provide a mechanism where there is the possibility of uh, making representation fair for everyone and the membership to one's uh, cultural, linguistic or ethnic community is not 
seen or should not work as a detriment or a kind of disadvantage to one's scope and you know, to one's chance in participating in the common life of the community. So, according to Will Kemlicka, the demands of national minorities and ethnic groups can be accommodated within a framework of democratic citizenship. So, they are basically extending the notion of uh, liberal democratic citizenship by uh, including or by accommodating the demands or the requirements of the specific cultural, linguistic or ethnic communities. So, one this accommodation of difference can be done within the framework of a liberal democratic citizenship by two ways. One, there should be protection of common rights of all citizens that is protection of civil and political rights of individuals, freedom of associations, religion, speech and mobility for protecting group differences. So, one way of doing uh, or accommodating such differences is by protecting the common rights of every citizens to have uh, civil and political rights, freedom of association, religion, speech and mobility so that they can protect their differences or group differences. Then second there should be accommodation of cultural diversity. So, the cultural diversity here is not something which is seen as a kind of problem or a challenge rather it is seen as something which enriches the lives of the citizen and must be protected and celebrated. So, there should be accommodation of cultural diversity through special legal and constitutional measures in a way that member of a specific groups being guaranteed specific rights as Young would call them group differentiated rights. So, these measures require some constitutional measures where the member of a particular communities, especially those who are marginal or excluded or in minority, some constitutional measures for uh, them to have a special representation that overall creates uh, the representation fair for everyone within the democratic um, setup, democratic framework of citizenship. Now, Kimlika argues for three kinds of group differentiated rights. One is self-government rights, polyethnic rights and then special representation rights. Now, these three kinds of constitutional measures or rights are given to three kinds of communities or groups in the society. So, first is the self-representation rights which recognize some kind of political autonomy or territorial uh, jurisdiction of national minorities. So, for example, within uh, Canada, you have a province or uh, Quebec which demands for greater autonomy or some kind of territorial autonomy to take decisions about uh, their collective affairs within the federal structure of Canada. There, Wilkim Lekka is arguing about for this kind of national minorities, there has to be some kind of self-government rights which ensures their autonomy within the overall political structure in the country. So, uh, these national minorities claim that their inclusion or incorporation in the larger state, while it was being done, they did not relinquish their specific cultural, social, linguistic specificities or identities and therefore, they demand for the self-government rights. So, the basically the self-government rights are meant for the national minorities who claim that while they were incorporated in the larger state, they did not relinquish some of their uh, political uh, or cultural linguistic identities or jurisdiction and uh, therefore, the state must recognize the self-government rights of these uh, national minorities. Then there is a polyethnic rights. And uh, these are specific rights of immigrant communities basically in the large uh, liberal democracies in Europe or in uh, US, you have a lot a number of immigrant communities from different parts of uh, the world. They carry certain culture, certain language, uh, certain way of living, certain way of uh, dressing and so on. 
So, this polyethnic rights are meant for the specific rights of immigrant communities and such rights may take the form of demanding the right to express their peculiarities and differences without fear of prejudice and discrimination in the mainstream society. So, what to wear, uh, where to pray, whom to marry, uh, what to eat, uh, which language one uh, should speak. So, these are some of the demands which must be protected in a liberal state, especially for those communities which are immigrant communities in a particular nation and they must express themselves or their way of life or their language or living style without being feared or stigmatized by the large mainstream society. So, polyethnic rights recognize the specific rights or peculiarities or differences of immigrant communities in the larger uh, democratic society. Now, the special representation uh, rights are third kind of rights which are meant for national and ethnic groups as well as for non-ethnic groups such as women, poor and disabled. This special representation rights are basically to democratize the state institution structures by making them more representative. So, the state structure even when it is neutral may lead to some kind of exclusion or marginalization of certain section of the society. So, to ensure the fair representation, uh, Will Kimlicka argues for special representation rights for national and ethnic groups, but also non-ethnic groups such as women, poor and disabled to make the state institutions and structure of administration more representative in nature. So, multicultural theory of citizenship has altered the way in which the political communities are thought of. So, usually political communities are thought of as a homogeneous group. So, far for being a homogeneous group, the political community is in multicultural discourse and is seen as a heterogeneous group of communities having different cultures, language, ethnicity and associated differences and peculiarity and so on. And yet, they all together enriches the experiences of individuals in the society and therefore, that must be protected and celebrated which leads to expansion or inclusiveness uh, of a liberal democratic framework of citizenship. However, multiculturalism runs into danger of denying the individual the right of critical and creative membership in the communities and overlook the hierarchies and operations that communities practice and promote within. So, one of the criticism that is uh, there with against multiculturalism is that it denies the individual his critical or creative membership by overlooking the hierarchies or operations that may exist or that may be promoted or practiced in the communities within. So, in recognizing or uh, accommodating the demands or requirements of different communities, it appears that multicultural uh, theorists uh, overlook the hierarchies or some inner undemocratic uh, practices within the community which prevents the individual his creative or uh, critical uh, rights or uh, membership. And it appears that individual is subordinated to the identity of the community and that is one of the biggest criticism against the multicultural theories of citizenship which somehow subordinate the rights of individual to that of communities. The another criticism leveled against multiculturalism is that by acknowledging the community's power to apply internal restraints, it leaves little scope for individual rights and freedom. And it appears that within minority or marginalized communities, rights of individuals are somewhat dispensable with in comparison to the rights and recognition of their communities. So, as I have said that multicultural theorists argue for uh, granting certain rights to individual not because the individual is a self-defining abstract individual, but because individual is also embedded in his socio, cultural, ethnic and linguistic community and therefore, certain rights to the individual must be given not because he is abstract or atomistic self-defining individual, but all because he is also 
a member to a particular community and thereby it appears that in recognition of community rights or group differentiated rights, the rights of individual and his freedom is somewhat compromised in the multicultural discourse and overall the tries to expand uh, the uh, liberal democratic framework, yet uh, they fail somewhat to understand the inner constraints or operations that operates and functions within uh, these communities and how to reconcile that with the liberal ideal of citizenship and rights is something which is uh, problematic in the multicultural threads. However, they tries to expand this limited or narrow understanding of individual as self-defining individual or community as a homogeneous community in the liberal framework to a uh, understanding of community which is heterogeneous. Um, which includes uh, different communities having different culture, ethnicity, language and so on and a society while developing the common outlook must recognize and protect those uh, diversities and pluralities. That is something which is a contribution of multiculturalism in citizenship uh, discourse. Now, we will move on to the cosmopolitan notion of citizenship which as I said is something not practiced as we see the membership to a particular political community or a nation state. So, in reality cosmopolitanism or cosmopolitan citizenship is far from practical or pragmatic and yet as an ideal as a thought experiment it is something which we must consider or engage with. So, uh, this idea of cosmopolitanism is derived from the Greek word cosmopolites which means citizen of the world and Diogenes is regarded as the first cosmopolitan philosopher who asserted that I am a citizen of the world. Now, this idea you know that uh, the citizenship is about membership to a political community. Now, the world uh, is divided into different nation states and this nation state is for all practical purpose is the legitimate political organization and institution and citizenship is seen in association with the membership to a particular nation state or a particular political community. However, uh, the uh, cosmopolitan citizenship tries to transcend the boundaries of nation states to develop a sensibilities, to develop the obligation towards world as a whole and not because uh, not limited to a particular nation state or a political communities. And this you can often see in say as a citizen of India or as a citizen of Pakistan or a citizen of Bangladesh, our sensibilities, loyalties and obligations are limited to territorial boundaries of say India, Pakistan or Bangladesh. But when we develop the sensibilities and obligation or loyalties towards world, our uh, response or our uh, association will then not be defined and limited to the territorial boundary of any of these states. So, because we consider ourselves and imagine ourselves not as a member of uh, a particular uh, political community, but to the larger community of humanity or human ideals as such. Now, this ideal was uh, there from the very beginning, but in modern contemporary times with the coming of globalization, theorists have also talked about the linking of relationship between citizenship and nation state and argue for replacing it with global or cosmopolitan citizenship with universal human community. So, the community to which one belongs is not limited to the nation state, but to a universal human community and that becomes the ideal for the cosmopolitan notion of citizenship. According to Derek Heater, Although cosmopolitan citizenship is undefinable, so when I say India, Pakistan or Bangladesh, there is a clear cut exact imagery both in the territorial or also in the political sense. But the world or the cosmopolitan citizenship uh, leads one in the realm of vagueness where you are not exact about the legal or the political status of your membership as it is in the case of your membership to a particular nation state or the political community. So, according to Derek Heater, although cosmopolitan citizenship is undefinable in theory and non-existent in practice, 
as an ideal it is worth considering. It lacks legal and political exactness as I have explained, however, its understanding ranges from vague to uh, precise and this we will do to these three, four ways of being a cosmopolitan citizenship. So, A, people who have a feeling of identity with the whole of humanity are regarded as world or cosmopolitan citizens. So, there are individuals in the society who feel or associate themselves with the whole humanity and not just to the members of their own particular nation states, they are regarded as a cosmopolitan citizen. B, cosmopolitan uh, citizens accept the moral percept that the individual has some responsibility for the condition of the planet and the rest of its inhabitants. So, they develop the sensibilities that their obligation is not just limited to a particular nation states and its territory, but it extends to the whole of humanities and the other inhabitants in that humanities as well. So, they uh, work or operates in this moral percept which transcend the boundaries of the nation state. So, then C, a cosmopolitan citizen came to live or abide by the codes of supra or transnational laws and possibly by universal and international laws. So, in uh, modern world, you also see the international regimes of institutions, laws, codes and framework through which all the nation state operates. And there is also the uh, gradual development of supranational bodies such as European Union, ASEAN, even in uh, South Asia we have SARC but it is not politically as successful as say European Union or ASEAN. So, the cosmopolitan citizen uh, develop a outlook which operates and functions within the codes of these supra or transnational laws and possibly universal and international laws. Then finally, a cosmopolitan citizen believes in and work for supranational universal political community and authority. So, they develop, so the concept of human rights or democracy or democratic rights of the citizen, the access to the basic health care, universal declaration of human rights is one such example, where every member of the planet is treated as a human and therefore, having certain rights which must be protected or guaranteed by the political authority. So, uh, the cosmopolitan citizenship believes and work for developing this uh, global communities or universal community of people where the understanding the codes and laws are not limited to the national boundaries. So, we have seen that from the vague understanding of developing a sensibility for the world or for the planet to working for a more concrete or uh, uh, pragmatic creation of political authority or universal community is uh, uh, the evolution of cosmopolitan thinking and imagination in modern times. However, there are genuine criticism leveled against the cosmopolitan notion of citizenship and there are many skeptics who argue that such notion of citizenship in the absence of exact legal and political status are merely utopia. So, there are many skeptics who argue that the cosmopolitan citizenship is merely utopia because it lacks the exact legal or political status as we see that when we claim to be the citizen of India or Bangladesh or uh, United Kingdom or USA, there is the exact rights or obligations associated with the membership to that particular community. But when you claim to be the member of the global community or a cosmopolitan citizen, those precise understanding of your legal and political status is not there and therefore, many skeptics argue that cosmopolitan citizenship and this discourse is merely utopia because it lacks exact legal and political definition. And many others uh, view that cosmopolitan citizenship is nothing but a facets of globalization which is extension of capitalism driven largely by the MNCs and TNCs that is multinational corporation or transnational corporation because they want free flow of capital and goods 
therefore they want to create a global network of institutions and authority which helps in the free flow of ideas peoples goods and uh, capital so uh, many skeptics argue that cosmopolitan notion of citizenship is nothing but a facets of globalization which itself is an extension of capitalism which is driven largely by the multinational corporations or transnational corporations now still others associate uh, uh, cosmopolitan citizenship with a privileged class which um, emerge in uh, many nation states who happen to cross national boundaries very often and aspire for creating some kind of global community so this notion of cosmopolitan citizenship is meant only for this privileged class which is beneficiary of this globalization who often transcend the national boundaries and then they aspire to create some kind of um, global community so uh, many critics still believe that most people live or uh, operates within the framework of nation states but then there is a privileged section which often transcend those uh, boundaries of nation states and therefore they aspire to create the global community and that is limited to them largely people live and um, abide by the national boundary so uh, there are the genuine criticism against the cosmopolitan notion of citizenship so although it is true that cosmopolitan uh, citizenship is far from being real or pragmatic or practical yet even its critic would argue or acknowledge the necessity of creation of a global society to which in each one of us has obligation to so even these critics and skeptics would argue that there is a need to create some kind of global society or community to which each one of us has obligation to and the nation states is not ultimate or the sufficient for tackling many of the challenges of uh, the modern contemporary world so there are many challenges before humanity such as climate change or terrorism or global terrorism which requires people and community to come together in order to solve it so these challenges of climate change or global terrorism cannot be tackled by a particular country or a single country no matter how much economically and militarily powerful that country is the challenge of climate change or global terrorism requires people communities or nations to come together to solve it and that connects the individual with the uh, local with the national to the global or vice versa so this flow of or uh, connection of individual with the global or the cosmopolitan is something which is the need of the hour to tackle many of the challenges and therefore even when uh, the cosmopolitan citizenship and its notion lacks a precise legal and political uh, definition or a status yet as an ideal it is something which is worth uh, considering and with that we come to conclude this lecture by uh, repeating some of the points so basically the significance of contemporary debates on citizenship lies in the fact that the political community is not homogeneous not simple but it is a complex hierarchical and ideologically plural and therefore when we develop the notion of citizenship we need to take into account these complex hierarchical or ideologically plural nature of uh, the political community and in absence of such understanding the notion of citizenship will always be limited or partial so the significance accorded to the contextualized self or which you can often call embedded self to is crucial in building substantive notion of citizenship where citizen is not just individual as self defining but also because individual is a member to a particular ethnic cultural linguistic community which shapes his views values behavior outlook and so on so the idea of individual as a part of the community bond to other individual not by necessity or private interest but by community or social concern is an important aspect of this formulation as we have discussed in the multicultural notion of uh, citizenship or differentiated citizenship as argued by Irish Marian Young
So, citizenship to understand it we uh, has four components which we need to take into account. First is the rights, then obligation, then identity and then participation. So, citizenship includes these all four components. So, uh, your membership to a particular community gives you certain rights. It also requires certain obligation from you. So, as a member of a particular nation state, you have certain rights, but you also have certain obligation to that uh, nation states and so on. It gives you an identity. So, uh, once you belong to a particular nation state, that belonging to a particular nation state gives you a legal and political identity within the country and outside where you are treated as the Indian or Pakistani or Bangladeshi or British and so on. And finally, it gives you the right to participate in the political process in a particular community or a nation state. So, on the basis of these four key components, one can understand and explain different conceptualization of citizenship, whether it is a definition by T. H. Marshall or by the multiculturalist or the cosmopolitan. By these three, four uh, components of citizenship, one can understand these conceptualization. So, this we have studied through different notions of citizenship such as subject and citizen. If you remember the first lecture where we tried to understand citizenship by distinguishing it from say subject or understanding of subject, the idea of single or double citizenship. Then we did T. H. Marshall and liberal conceptions of citizenship and finally, multicultural and cosmopolitan citizenship. So, this is all on today's lecture on citizenship particularly the multicultural or the cosmopolitan uh, citizenship and for that you can refer to some of these books by Drazek and uh, Phillips, the Oxford Handbook of Political Theory. Uh, this chapter by Anupama Roy, Citizenship in Rajiv Bhargav and Ashok Acharya will give you a better understanding of uh, uh, some of the topics that we have covered within the citizenship. You can also refer to John Hoffman and Paul Graham, Introduction to Political Theory and then Gaba and Susila Ramaswamy. You can refer to understand some of the themes that we have discussed in uh, citizenship. So, that is all for uh, today. Thanks for listening. Thank you all.